Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to continue where I kind of left off before. Um, I had just made a kind of a, a more detailed future value calculator, assuming different amounts of investing and different interest rates in various blocks of years. You know, maybe a th few years here, six years there, four years there. Now, if you wanted to go even more detailed, you could go year by year. But I wouldn't suggest maybe going in this horizontal layout, not that you couldn't do that. So let's try a more vertical layout if I want to go year by year. I'm going to jump, just jump over to a blank worksheet and give myself some labels here. Um, let's see, I guess I'll start off here and I'll put in the year. Um, total investment. Let's go ahead and stretch these out a bit. Um, let's see, I'm going to put in my uh, rate of return and balance. Okay, let me just kind of spread these out a little bit here. All right, so I do have some column labels up here, and I'm going to assume that each of these is going to be one year. So let's go ahead and start this off. Let's see, we are really in... Uh, 2011 right now so what the hell 2011 2012 and then of course we can autofill these down I think that'll be enough to kind of get the idea I'm gonna change the alignment of all my cells here my labels so they're over at the right now total investment let's assume it's the end of the year 2011 and we've invested a total of $5,000, okay? So maybe at the end of the year, you put that into an IRA or something like that. And in fact, let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna insert another row here, and I'll just go and call this year zero. And let's assume we started off with 20,000 already saved up, okay? So we had 20 grand. Now we're gonna put in an additional 5,000. And in 2011, let's say our rate of return was 14%. Yeah, it's possible. Sure it is. Um, okay, now we just need to calculate our new balance. Now, i got to tell you, there's a number of ways we could do this, and there's not like a one, just one, correct way. For instance, you might say, well, wait a minute. I mean, if I deposited, deposited this five grand right on January 1st and got a 14% annual return, that's great because then I'm going to get a 14% return on a total of 25,000. The original 20 grand that I had, December 31st, 2010, versus the 5,000 at the beginning. But then you could say, well, wait a minute. If I didn't deposit that 5,000 until the end of 2011, the 14% return of 2011 was only impacted on the 20 grand. Okay? And then you might be thinking, oh, wait a minute. No, I didn't deposit 5,000 all at once. I deposited 500 a month for 10 months. You know? So there's different ways to do this. You're going to have to kind of think of the way that's most accurate for your particular situation. I'm going to pretend, though, I think that deposited this 5000 at the beginning, okay? So in fact, just to make sure, you know, we're really clear on that, I could go to this and I could type in beginning of 2011. There we go, so now my label is even clearer. So I deposited $5,000 at the beginning of the year, 2011, and then I got a 14% return. And maybe that makes sense, you know? You stick your money in your uh, Roth IRA, maybe in January or something like that, after you're ready to do taxes that are due in a couple months later. Okay, now for the ending balance. I'm gonna click on my equal sign. This is just gonna be a calculation here. I'm gonna take my previous month's beginning balance, plus my beginning of year investment for that particular year. I'm going to take this amount and I'm going to multiply it by my rate of return for that year. Okay, so let me put some parentheses on this just so we can keep track of stuff. So I'm taking my previous balance plus my additional 
investment to get my total balance and I'm multiplying it by the rate of return. Now that's not going to give me my finished balance, that's just going to give me my gain for the year. Okay, 3500 bucks. I had 20000 I invested 5000 so I had $25,000, got a 14% return on that. My gain was $3,500. So basically, I need to take this amount and I need to add it to my previous balance. So 100% not necessary, but I'm going to enclose this in another set of parentheses and I'm going to add this gain to my previous year's balance. There we go. So basically, nope, that's not accurate. Let me do this. I've got to add in my total investment too. So plus investment. There we go. Now we have an accurate number. We had 20 grand. We added five more, getting us to 25. We got a nice good 14% return of 3,500 bucks. So that brings our balance down to up to 28,500. Now the rest of this is going to be pretty, you know, a lot easier. Once you do this first row here, it's a it's a cakewalk. So for my investments, let's see, I'm just going to go ahead and drag my annual investment down. I'll for now assume that I'm going to be putting in five grand at the beginning of each year. And for now, I'll go ahead and assume 14% annual return. Not very realistic, but let's go ahead and plug that down anyway. And then I should just be able to take this number Okay, my balance. Notice I'm not clicking from the first row. I'm really getting this first calculated balance, and I'm going to drag that down. And let's make this look a little bit more number friendly. There we go. Do a currency, and let me get rid of the decimals. Okay, so now we can start to see how things are looking. So basically, I'm investing five thousand per year and getting a fourteen percent annual rate of return. And of course, the impact that has on my balance is pretty pleasant. because I have 15 years here. Now let's assume I don't get 14%. Maybe in 2012 everything's doing great and we actually get a 19% return. Okay, So that definitely has a great impact on things. But then the following year things pair back and we go down to 8%, then 9%, and then 12%, and then 5%. Maybe there's a negative 4% in there. 20% year. So what we're really doing here is we're giving our Excel worksheet, our calculator, a lot more detail so that we can kind of keep up with our balances. Why might you want to do stuff like that? Because then you have an accurate picture of what's realistic. So if you go back over your previous year's rates of return, you might be deciding, you know what, it looks like I'm getting an average rate of return of around 9%. And perhaps you see that a good uh, S&P 500 index fund is getting an average rate of return about 9%. Well, if you can just get that from an index fund versus your own stock picking, then you might just relieve a little bit of stress and just go with the index fund. Maybe you're getting an average annual return of 9% and you see that the market is getting an average annual return of 6% for that same period. That lets you know that you're actually doing something pretty good. Okay, so. Oh, in fact, I didn't even calculate that cool 20% in there, so my average is about 10% and a return. So this way, if you want to put in yearly changes, it's even more accurate. Now, of course, you're probably thinking you could even go a step further and do monthly changes, and you certainly could. So you'd basically have 12 rows of data for every year, even more accurate. But this is a pretty good way to go to kind of keep up with your retirement fund account balances.